So on page 445, we begin with activity 5.5, 5.6. We actually revisit that travel from home club, right, where we had the average cost was equal to 800 plus 20x over x minus 10, right? We're going to revisit this problem. So we're asked, find h of 60. So that's where I'm going to replace all of my x's with 60. So my new equation looks something like this. And notice the units, right? We get uh, $2,000 per 50 sets or $40 per set. Okay. And we're given a little explanation down here, right? If 60 items were bought, that means we sold 50 because we gave 10 away. Um, and the average cost per set comes out to $40 per set or per item. We're then asked to take a look at question number two. How many items would you have to buy and sell to bring the cost down to $3,250? Okay, so we're now we're going to replace this h of x with 3250. So here's my new equation, right? x is what we don't know. We don't know how many items we need to, to buy and sell to bring our cost down to 3250. So question three says, okay, why don't we use our calculator to represent this graph? All right, so we're going to answer question two by graphing, right? We're going to graph the left side of the equal sign and the right side of our equal sign and the, um, the intersection should be our answer. So take out your calculator and let's press the y equals key and I'm going to enter the right side of my equal sign first and, and make sure you are careful with parentheses right so you'll notice I've isolated my numerator by using parentheses I've isolated my denominator through the use of parentheses. The left side of my equation is this 3250 Now we do need an appropriate window, um, and if I look at their graph, it looks like they're going from zero to, I don't know, maybe a hundred. So um, when I look at my y min and y max, I'll start at zero, oops, and I'm going to go out to 100, and we don't have to change the scale, but I'm going to count by tens. And for the x min and x max, I'll start at zero. And if you look at their table here, it looks, it looks like they're going from 0 to, say, 140, 150. Um, so I'll go from 0 to, say, 150. Now I press graph. And it looks like I'm reproducing their graph. Okay. And now the intersection, if I press second, and above trace says calc, so I'll press the trace key, number 5 for intersection. And then uh, my first curve, that's fine. My second curve, that looks good. And then my guess, yeah, it's somewhere around here. So I'll press enter. So it looks like we have to basically buy and sell um, a 90 of these items, right? We're going to buy 90, give away 10, so we actually sell 80 of them to bring our average cost down to 3250 So question four says, what is the solution to the equation in problem two? So we've just solved it, right? That intersection of 90. So I just put a quick x equals 90 over here. The practical meaning in the context of this situation. So if you buy 90 travel sets and sell, I guess, 80 of them, right? Because we give away uh, 10. Then the cost per set for the item sold will be exactly $32.50. So let's take a look at question number five. It says, okay, let's solve that same equation, but using algebra. So my suggestion would be, why don't we cross multiply? And you can treat this 32.5 as a fraction, as 32.5 uh, over one or 3250 over one. So again, we're gonna cross multiply to get something that looks like this, right? And now I'm gonna distribute this 3250 so when we distribute, we have 3250x minus 325. So now I want to combine like terms where I can. So uh, I can bring either my x's to the one side or my numbers to the one side. So here you see I'm going to subtract 20x from both sides. So that will get all of the x's away from the left side of the equation. And I drew some lines to separate my work. All right, so after we subtract 20x from both sides, uh, the 3250x minus 20 will leave me with 1250x. 
and there'll be no x on the right side of the equal sign. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add 325 to both sides. So now I'm left with 1250x equals 1125, and the last thing for me to do will be to divide both sides by 1250. So here's me dividing both sides by 1250. So I'm left with x equals 90 as my final answer. So again, this x equals 90 matches our work when we graph this, right? When we graph both sides of the equal sign and found the intersection, right, that happened at x equals 90. So we solved it graphically, and then we used algebra to solve the same problem, and, and we got the same answer, or we arrived at the same answer. All right, so in the next video, we'll solve a few more problems or a few more equations algebraically.